Today in this video, we'll be testing our emus and talking about the procedures that are required right now in Florida in January of 2023 to legally transport emu chicks and eggs across state lines. The rules do rapidly change and by the time you're watching this, it could be six months or a year down the road or maybe multiple years down the road. The rules that I'm talking about may have changed by then. So make sure you go directly to FDAC's site or the MPIP site to keep up to date on the current rules. Uh, but today we're going to break down the basics of the current rules that we have right now in January of 2023. And we'll show you how we conduct the tests here on our farm. And I'm also going to say this video should not be construed as legal advice. This is merely a presentation of the facts as I currently understand them. So don't take legal advice from me. Go directly to FDAX and the MPIP site to get your information. But I'm showing you how we got our information and what we did to get our tests done. So I'll just explain it to you from my point of view. You might notice me looking off a little bit in this video. I have everything written down just to make sure that I cover it all. So I'm just sort of looking over towards my cliff notes. So in Florida, producers are required to be a part of the MPIP program, also known as the National Poultry Improvement Program, and get their subpart F designation if they plan to ship eggs or transport eggs or chip chicks across state lines. So if you are not in the state of Florida, other states do have their own rules, requirements, regulations, however you want to call it. This is all under the National Poultry Improvement Program, but some states require more and some states require less. Uh, we were talking about it the other day. The rules in Florida are, were almost seven pages long at one point compared to Tennessee who literally has two paragraphs worth of rules. So be sure that you check on your own state rules and requirements. So let's talk about what it takes here in Florida to transport chicks and eggs in and out of the state and across state lines. And then we're gonna show you how we actually conduct those tests because we just recently did it two days ago. So first and foremost, to get your subpart F designation to, tr to transport your eggs across state lines in and out of Florida, you need to join the National Poultry Improvement Program or MPIP like I've mentioned already in the video. To do this, you need to contact FDAX, which is also known as the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. So that's FDAX. So you'll hear me say MPIP and FDAX a lot in this video. It's just an abbreviation for those two. Things. So once you're in contact with somebody at FDAX, they'll probably recommend you to your local inspector for the MPIP program. MPIP works through these state departments like FDAX to implement their program. So you'll get an FDAX inspector and schedule a time with them to come out to your farm to test your flock. The MPIP program is not just for emus. It is all types of poultry. I'm gonna read from my little list here. Uh, it does not only include emus, but it includes chickens, turkeys, waterfowl, which includes duck, geese, and swans, pheasants, quail, peafowl, guineas, chukars, gruis, I have no idea what that is. Never heard of that bird ostrich, emu, rhea, and cassowary. So if you already have one of these species of bird, it can be extremely beneficial for you to join the MPIP program and just get it done and over. The main benefit the MPIP gives us as a farm is that we can legally transport our chicks and eggs across state lines. And that includes not only our emus, but also chickens, ducks, all that sort of stuff. Each of those species has their own subpart. Today, we're just gonna be talking about subpart F. If you wanna know more about those subparts, let us know down in the description. We might do a video on chickens, ducks, turkeys, one of those. The testing isn't all that much different between the different species. With us being a part of MPIP, it also means that we can only buy from other MPIP farms when we get new stock. So it is, a, I call it more of a blessing than anything else because since we're buying from another MPIP farm, we know that their flock has been tested and clean and we don't really have to worry about any complications. We of course still quarantine when we do, as you should with any animal. For those of you who are interested in showing birds, it's not something that we do 
or even recommend, but a lot of shows require you to be a part of MPIP and have a tested clean flock before you can bring your birds into the show. That way they can avoid any sickness spreading. It still happens, unfortunately, but it is a thing that a lot of shows require. So being a part of MPIP, if you're interested in showing birds, can be a massive benefit towards you being able to legally bring your birds into the show. And by maintaining our membership with MPIP, keeping up on our inspections, and having a good relationship with our inspector, we are the first line of people who get to know about any disease outbreak. So if there's a massive outbreak of avian influenza in the next county over or something, we are the very first people to get a call and say, hey, you need to lock down your biosecurity measures and make sure that this stuff does not get on your farm. So there's a lot of benefits to joining NPIP. The person with two or three birds in their backyard or just strictly pets and has no plans of selling eggs or chickens or any type of fowl whatsoever. Um, probably not the program for you, but those of you who are even down to small hobby farmer uh, who do sell uh, hatching eggs to other people, it's a massive benefit to be a part of MPIP because it means you are a legit operation and you're protected in case of any sort of outbreak. You know what's going on and you know that your flock is tested and clean. So now that we've gotten through most of the technical legal aspects of why you should join NPIP and the purpose behind the program, let's talk about the nitty gritty of the actual testing process that you're gonna go through. So up until recently, a veterinarian was required to be on site when you do your testing. This is another reason I mentioned earlier in the video that these rules do rapidly change and can change at any moment. By the time I'm done with this video, I bet you a rule could have changed. Hopefully it hasn't, but make sure that you go directly to the source to get your information. So recently, it is now no longer a requirement to have a veterinarian on site when you are doing your emu testing for subpart F. But it's definitely encouraged if you do have some emus who are hard to handle or are going to be a pain, it's encouraged that you do get a vet on site. Just make sure that your testing environment is safe for everyone that is there. And in order to keep the inspectors safe, inspectors are not allowed to enter the pen with your emus. They can be on the other side of the fence they cannot be in the pen with your emus, but their presence is required. Your inspector has to be there in order to do the testing. So vet is not required, inspector is no matter what. So there's some tools that we provided to do the testing. Those links are gonna be down in the description and you'll see them in use here in this video. And then there's some other tools that your inspector is going to provide. So I would make sure that you have what we've got at the very minimum. Um, and the inspector will bring what he has to bring. So in order to obtain your subpart F designation, there are two tests that you have to complete with your inspector there on site. The first test we're gonna talk about is the pylorium typhoid test, uh, AKA your salmonella test. I probably said it wrong, but it's one of those things I have trouble pronouncing. So this test is conducted by clipping a toenail to get a small amount of blood from the bird. The blood is then mixed with an antigen on a plate to get the final result as to if you have salmonella or not. Hopefully you don't. So this whole process is gonna be shown here very soon in the video um, and mom's gonna take it from there. But I wanna explain it a little bit more in detail right here. So what we do is we get the emu's foot we put it down on a rubber mat with a towel on top of it for our clean working surface. We get our emu's foot and we wipe it down with some towels, get all the nasty dirt and poop and whatever else is on their foot off of it. And then we have some little safety clippers that have got a guard on them so that you can't go too far on their nail. You'll take that pair of safety clippers and take small sections out of the end of their nail until they begin to bleed from their nail. And when I say small sections, I don't mean this much. I mean like this much. Just a little bit of their toenail needs to come off. And you're just gonna take it in sections because it's really hard or really impossible to see where the bloodline is in an emu's toenail. So just take little tiny sections, don't take too much. Um, and just wait for that blood to start dripping out of there. So once you've got that blood dripping out of their toenail, 
your inspector will either give you a small little vial, I don't have any with me, it's something that they brought with them, or they've got a little ring tool, another thing they brought with them, that they'll give you, and you'll take either the vial and put just a little bit of blood in that vial, I'm talking like a couple drops, you'll see it later in the video, or the, the ring tool, you'll fill the ring up with blood, and you'll hand it back to your inspector over the fence, he will go ahead and mix the blood with the antigen and get his result as to whether or not your birds have salmonella. So after we've gotten the sample, we've handed it off to the inspector, what we like to do is we have two different types of styptic that we use. We have these little pads, there'll be links down in the description to those as well as part of our materials. We like to rub that pad on the bottom of their toenail there to get it cleaned off again get that blood starting to clot up, and then we've got a styptic gel. We put a little bit of that gel on the bottom of their toenail, and hopefully that will stop the bleeding. If it doesn't, we let them run around in the dirt for a little while. If we did it correctly, there shouldn't be enough blood dripping to have any effect on the bird whatsoever. They'll just run around in the dirt, and it'll clot that blood up, and not. So if done properly, if you only take small sections of that toenail, you're not impatient, clip, 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 trying to get a bunch of blood to run out, then you shouldn't have any issues. So just take your time, be patient. The second test is quite a bit easier to do as long as you've got birds that like to be handled like ours do. In the video, you'll see our birds didn't want to exactly play nice. They didn't like all the cameras and people and everybody around and all. But within about 15 minutes, we got our testing done on our three birds. It wasn't that big of a deal. The second test is for avian influenza or AI. So this test is really super easy. Your inspector will give you a cotton swab. You take that cotton swab and you will open their mouth. There's a small slit in the top of their mouth. It's almost like a V shape. You'll go ahead and get your cotton swab and rub it all around in there, around the top of their mouth. You don't have to spend 30 seconds in the top of their mouth, but spend at least three three to five seconds rubbing the top of their mouth and uh, get a good bit of sample on that swab. Don't let them swallow the swab. We have had them try to do that. So keep their mouth open and just get a little bit of that sample there, hand it back over the fence to your inspector. Boom, that test is done. That test has to be sent off to a lab. So your inspector will take that sample swab and put it in a little vial. They'll ship it off to a lab and get the results in a few days. Uh, we've never had a problem with getting any bad results back. We've always been good on that front. So hopefully the same for you. And as long as all your results come back clean, congrats, you just got your subpart F. As long as there were no other complications. Within a few days, your inspector will probably reach back out to you and say, hey, you're good to go. You now have your subpart F designation and you are legal to do your stuff. So let's go ahead and view some actual video of these tests being conducted. We were lucky enough to have Dr. Richardson, the head vet here for the state for FDAX, uh, Inspector Yant and Inspector Doyle out to our farm on uh, January 11th of 2023, so two days ago from when I'm filming this, to sort of set the record straight on the current standard for getting your subpart F and testing your emus. That's the main reason we're making this video is we've had a lot of requests from other breeders to make this video, explain how this is done because this standard has not really been set across the state. There's some inspectors who want to do it a certain way, others who want to do it another way. Now it seems like there's maybe a standard set in place and we just wanted to show y'all our experience getting our subpart F for this year. We had it last year, um, but we got it. We had to do our reinspection this year. so wanted to set the record straight for everybody this year. So I'm gonna hand it over to mom and let her do her thing and enjoy the little bloopers of emus not wanting to cooperate as well. I'll be right back. Good morning. We are going to AI test and blood test our emus for PT. So we have Ollie here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the swab. And usually he's a pretty good boy. Can you open up? Ready? What's in there, all? What's this? Do you want it? No. He says, I'm not really sure I want something stuck down my throat this morning. Well, he doesn't eat it, it's the main thing. <laughs> he about, one of them about swallowed yeah. one last year. <laughs> he tried to swallow it last year. Come on, open your mouth. Hey, look. 
Top, 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 of, top of the, get up on the top of, there you go. See that slit? That's what you want in. Yep, there we go. <laughs> That so that was not. pretty easy. We just stick a Q-tip <laughs> in his mouth. Yeah, Actually, yeah he's like, well, where's the rest of the food? So we have three of our emus here. All three of these have been, well, we have Quinn, Henry, and Ollie. Ollie was not hand-raised, but he was, um, he's worked out really well anyway. Come here. So I need Jed to come in here, please. We're gonna go ahead and clean Ollie's nail. And I have three little, I have a couple of tools. These are just your standard dog nail clippers. They have a guard on the back of them. So I know I won't clip too far on there. Ollie, can you come back here? I need you. Come here. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, I'd like to stay over here, please. I've laid down a silicone mat and then I have a um, just a terry cloth towel on it here on the ground. If Jed can get him to come over here. I also have some styptic pads and some styptic gel here that I'll put on there. So I'm going to get him to I'm, I'm fine. just chill out here. We're going to put one of his nails on there. Normally I have a, a wipe here. You're okay, I'll come here, big man. Quinn's trying to eat my Jacksonville. jacket. Hey, easy. Easy, buddy. Got it back in the dirt. Come here, buddy. A lot of times it's easier just to move their... their feet move to them. Jed's kind of backed up against a fence right now. You got my... My thingy ready? Yeah, what are you doing? Oh. Well, that didn't go quite as planned. Okay, so we've got his nail really clean right now. We're just gonna put the clippers in here. We have the little tool. Trying to eat my beard. Jed's just keeping him occupied. We're not really restraining him there. So yeah, I've got a little bit of blood there. Not enough. I got blood, but it's not enough. Somebody come here and let me do their freaking feet. Quinn's all over Ben's shoes. Let him, let him just stand there. That's the first one you built. Yeah, maybe Dad can video and. They built that one. The dude is working it. Yeah. We're gonna clean his foot. We've got a little vial here. And we're gonna try and get blood on that. Instead, come here, come here, good boy, good boy. They have very large, thick nails. I was going to ask, how do you see the bloodline? I don't. That's why I'm trying to cut into it. <laughs> there you go. Now you got blood. Hi. What do you think, shiny? It's gonna pick on you now. <laughs> I go in there and they want to bite me. Things on my belt. Okay, we got blood. I took that little All right. and KO'd his butt. All right. With a and that and. Get it on there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Good. Just right. Now, we, now did we... Okay, so what I'm doing now is I just have a styptic okay. pad. Have we swapped what other one you're doing? These. No, I have not. Okay. Oh, Quinny's going to make boy noises for us. Oh, good deal. Grunt, grunt. Mm -hmm. 
So I also have some gel that I'll put on this. <laughs> Dirt will work. <laughs> He's gonna feel this now, probably. Yep. There you go. Now you got dirt and a. Can I have my wipe back? <laughs> we, Thanks. We Doctor Shack was castrated. Do we need to swab the? Uh, yeah, we need to swab Quinn. As long as you know which one's which. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. All of them. I'm gonna hand this to you when you're ready. You can just put this in here. Hi. Oh oh oh. Where are you going? <laughs> Look, do you want it? Got it. That's good. Put it for the mouth. There you go. Excellent. Thank you. I never did buy I never bought it. See, and that's how it's supposed to go. That's the like, easy one. Oh my goodness, Mom. Thanks. Thanks. You Thanks. gagged an emu. You're such a good girl. All right. And there's my easy girl. They are very easy. Where's the vial? We don't have a vial. Where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the vial? Right there in your pocket. Where's it? It's in your pocket. No, I hand it. It was on the mat. Oh, Here. there it is. I got it. I got it. I got it. Got it? All right. Okay. You got your blood now. There we go. But that's... that's uh, you got a goat helping out, too. I yeah, she keeps chewing on me. An end to some death All right. Hand that to him. Those are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Good job. So as you can see in the video, it can be a little bit frustrating to get everybody to cooperate. With some patience and some calmness in the air, everybody cooperates, the testing goes well. It's not a big deal. So take your time, be calm, and if you've got to hire a vet, get them on site, they might be a little bit more creative and able to help you get your samples that you have to get. So thank you for watching. I hope this video wasn't too boring for everybody. We've had a lot of requests from other breeders to make this video, highlight how this is done, and hopefully set the record straight. Hopefully all these rules won't change tomorrow and this video be a whole bunch of BS for everybody. But I think they're pretty set in stone, at least for the time being. So pretty simple, just your two tests to get your subpar F. As of the current moment, I am pretty sure we are one of only two farms in the state of Florida to have their subpar F designation. But that could have changed by the time that I'm filming this video. It's been a few days since I looked it up. So if you're a breeder in the state, you want to start shipping out of state, transporting out of state eggs and chicks, definitely recommend that you make sure you have your subpar app. For those of you that are buying chicks from out of the state, people that are North Carolina, Kentucky, wherever in the U.S., that want to start buying chicks from people here in Florida, make sure that they do have their subpar F. Um, it's something I would definitely recommend. If you're buying from somebody who doesn't have this subpar F, you are definitely taking a risk. If you were to stop at an agricultural inspection station here in Florida, without your VS9-3 form that your breeder is supposed to give you uh, when they sell you the chicks, uh, you can be in quite a bit of trouble and the breeder can get in some trouble. So make sure that you're following everything by the book. If you've got questions about it, feel free to reach out to me. Like I said, the best source is to go directly to FDAC or the MPAP program, but I'm happy or my parents, Gigi and Jed, are happy to answer any questions that you might have about getting chicks. And we'll answer them to the very best of our ability and knowledge. So on to some other business. Really hope that everybody had good holidays and are enjoying their new year so far. In our absence from YouTube over the past few months, we've been really busy here on the farm and we have a very big year plan ahead. Hopefully a lot more of that year will be published on YouTube than we had last year. And I am super excited to see that in our absence, we passed a thousand subscribers. So thank you so much for your support, everybody. I, it means so much to us and I cannot wait to see what this year holds for us and YouTube and all of social media, really. So we've got big plans for the farm this year. Not sure we're ready to announce a lot of them. Hopefully some more on-farm event and some more social media activity. That's about all I'm willing to say right now because we haven't really set anything in stone yet. So be sure to subscribe here on YouTube if you haven't already and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, all those different platforms and check out our website 
to keep in the loop about where we're at and what we're doing and you'll be the first to know exactly what we've got in store for the year. So speaking of the website, we have a new website up. Made a new website last year, didn't pan out the way we wanted it to. We're with a new service now, and it's much more user-friendly and easier for our customers to access. So be sure to check out our website. It's still under construction, but it's definitely functional at this point. And check out our blog where we'll be having a lot of new content and hopefully our store with some items added to it very soon. So thank you so much for watching and sticking through this video. Hope to see you in the next.